Does this ever happen to you? You're talking about the Bible or Christianity, and people bring up objections. Wouldn't it be nice to hear some answers? Hi, this is Fred VK with the Blue Ridge Bible Talks. Welcome to my front yard. You know, it's nice and cool right now. Well, it's kind of warm, but it's going to be really hot today, and it has been for the last few days. It gets as hot as... It gets really hot around here. But, you know, that's a subject that comes up from time to time. Hell. And more specifically, how could a loving God send people to hell? I was having a conversation once, nice lady, and she was all upset about that. And she said, my God is a God of love, and he would never send anyone to hell. And I thought for a second, and I asked her, where did you get that idea? What idea? Where did you get the idea that God is a God of love? And she kind of shook and sputtered for a second. Well, from the Bible! You know, you stupid. <laughs> okay. And I asked her, well, aren't you being a little bit selective? You see, this only works if you're talking about Christianity and the framework is the God of the Bible. Other gods, other religions, they're going to have to deal with things the way they do. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who raise objections about the God of the Bible and specifically how this supposed loving God would send anyone to hell. And my point is that both of these things are throughout the scriptures, that he is a loving God and he is a righteous God. He will bring justice upon wrongdoing. Oh, yes, he will. Does not negate his love. He loves perfectly. He judges perfectly. And there we are, kind of in the middle. Hmm. Now, we're going to look at a few passages today. The first one we've seen a time or two. John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Ah, there we go. For God so loved. He's a God of love. It's right there in the world's most famous verse. But guess what also is there? Those who believe in Jesus, his Son, will not perish. What about those who do not believe? Hmm. So there we have the love of God and the justice of God, the perishing motif. Hmm. Where do people go who perish under the justice of God? Yeah, you guessed it. So two ideas side by side, God's love and God's wrath against those who refuse to love him back. Now our second passage comes from Romans chapter 1. The great Apostle Paul is talking about the coming of the gospel to earth. And he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. For God so loved the world that whosoever... Same idea. It is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew... Then for the Gentile, the message of God came first to the people of Israel through what we call the Old Testament. And now that Jesus has come in fulfillment of it, Paul preached first to the Jews. But then he also turned and he preached to the Gentiles. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Now that is interesting. This gospel revealing God's righteousness. And it's not that it's revealing how righteous God is. I mean, it's there. It's all throughout. But you see, it's revealing the righteousness that comes from God to the believer. It is how God makes a person right in his eyes. A righteousness that is revealed 
by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. You see, it's all about what has happened to the believer. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. That gospel that comes through the Son is the power of salvation to everyone who believes it. But then Paul goes on. You see, the gospel has revealed this righteousness. But you know what? Something else is being revealed in these days. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. And it goes on talking about how God has made himself so very obvious by what has been made. So people are without excuse. He offers and he reveals righteousness for anyone who places their faith in Jesus. But wrath is revealed for those who refuse it. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son that those who would believe in him would not perish. And here, Paul is talking about those who then, through their refusal to believe, indeed will perish. Both of those ideas exist side by side. God's love and God's righteous determination to send those who refuse to hell. I listen to certain podcasts and, and videos where apologists will talk to an audience and just take questions right off the cuff. It's kind of daring. I'm not sure I could do that. I need to take time and think about it. But anyway, one lady challenged him and said, am I going to go to hell? Hmm. You know, that usually comes up like that. We're trying to tell people about Jesus, telling that, well, Jesus is indeed the only way. And people say, well, you're telling me I'm going to go to hell. And it's, uh, it can tend to put us on the defensive. And we want to backpedal. Well, well, well. We don't have to. We can just ask another question right back. So when someone challenges, are you saying I'm going to hell? We can ask the question, I don't know. Are you? You see, the ball is in their court. Are you going to accept this message of salvation through Jesus Christ? Because if you do, you have eternal life, forgiveness of sins, and you have peace with God. Do you want that? Are you going to accept it? And, you know, usually you're talking to someone who's kind of bolstered by the crowd and, well, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cut my own path. I'm going to do my own thing, whatever. Okay, now the question again is, who then is sending you to hell? God is not. You are, by your refusal. Anyone who believes, he gives eternal life. Those who refuse him, well, he grants the wish and allows them then to spend eternity apart from his presence. Both of those ideas... God's love, God's justice, the judgment of hell goes side by side throughout the scriptures and there's no way to disentangle one from the other. This is the truth of God. I hope you've enjoyed this short video and if you have, please press the like and subscribe and maybe the most important thing is just to pass it along. Share it with people you know and love Share it with believers, share it with the skeptics. We'll see you next time when we talk about that question. Well, how come God is such a God of wrath in the Old Testament, but a God of mercy in the New Testament? Oh, I can hardly wait. Bye-bye.